Europe is a multicultural region of the world. Compared to, say, North America, which has two main languages and maybe a bit of French, Europe has hundreds of languages that are still living and spoken today, from Slovenian to Sorbian, from Basque to Bulgarian. These are the languages of Europe. The languages of Europe are usually separated into two large groups, Indo-European and non-Indo-European. Indo-European languages are a group of languages that are derived from the people who lived in Western Eurasia about a bajillion years ago, around here. It's called European because it's the root of the three big European language groups, and it's also Indo because the other language branch in the Indo-European umbrella is Indo-Iranian, which is the root of many Indian languages. That's a lot of Indos for you to comprehend, but all you need to know is that Indo-European languages come from here. Non-Indo-European languages don't originate from here, and they come from elsewhere in the world, like East Asia or Mongolia mostly. Yes, seriously. Turkish people are literally from Mongolia. But hold your horses, Genghis Khan is still 800 years in the future. So now, let's talk about the branches of the Indo-European family. Derived from Volga Latin over 2000 years ago, the Roman Empire just eaten the entire Mediterranean for breakfast and accidentally spread their language and culture to the entire southern half of Europe. The Romans, over time, tried to civilise the barbarians around their borders by teaching them Latin. Some of these people resisted the Romans and refused to learn, like the Celts and the Serbs. But as for those who adopted Latin, over time these people created their own languages, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Catalan, Italian, Sardinian and Romanian are the main surviving Romance languages today, even though Romania is cut off from the other Romance languages. But today, these languages all still have historical roots to Latin, using the Latin alphabet, with similarities in its lexicon, pronunciations, and overcomplicated and sometimes unnecessary grammar. Which is why I'm dropping French next year. Thanks to the Imperial Age, Europe also spread their languages to other continents, making Spanish and Portuguese the main languages of South and Central America. Today there's over 800 million speakers in the Romance language group, with the number continually increasing. Romance languages also seem to be labelled as languages of love, which isn't really true because romance is referring to the Romans rather than love. But I mean, say what you like, France. When the Romans ate the entire Mediterranean for lunch, they started to conquer northwards, and they discovered two kinds of people in this part of Europe. The west of the Rhine was called Gaul, whilst the east of the Rhine was called Germania. By the time Rome collapsed, the Germanic tribes living in Germania had spread from Central Europe to places like Scandinavia and England, and even Crimea. Yes, seriously. Germanic then evolved into multiple similar but not really similar language groups to what we have today. There's West Germanic, which includes English and Scot, Dutch, Frisian, German, Luxembourgish and the German dialects of Swiss German and Austrian. The most spoken language in the Germanic group by far is English, which alone is spoken by just over 2 billion people across the world, mostly in these areas highlighted on this very nice map that I made for school a while ago. East Germanic is um, extinct, so uh, let's move on. North Germanic includes Danish, Swedish, Norwegian, Faroese and Alien. I mean Icelandic. So, what are some notable traits of Germanic languages? Well, much like Romance languages, they use the Latin alphabet, some use genders, and have similar grammar. And German sounds angry all the time. Welcome to Ask Connor with your host, Connor. So, Connor, question for today. Are the Germanic tribes Celts? Great question, Connor. No, Germanic tribes came from the north of Germany, whilst Celts came from the south. They're related, but not the same. Just know that no one can really be sure, because this happened thousands of years ago. But what I do know, Connor, is that I have no friends. Let's just continue with the video. 
Brilliant comrades, Balto Slavic languages, or just Slavic languages, make up the third large language group in Europe. Originating from modern day Belarus and Ukraine, the languages spread across Eastern Europe before Roman times. Estimated around 500 AD or later, Baltic languages split from the Slavs to form a sort of close language group, so you could even say there's four language groups. Baltic languages, mainly Lithuanian and Latvian, are similar to Slavic linguistically, but aren't close enough to be understandable. Baltic languages only have around 5 million native speakers today. Slavic languages have formed multiple smaller sub-branches though. Belarusian, Ukrainian and Russian are East Slavic and are similar to each other. This includes Kaliningrad. West Slavic languages include Polish, Czech, Sorb and Slovakian. Whilst Czech and Slovakian are similar and mutually understandable, Polish is quite different and actually closer to Slovenian linguistically. And Sorbian, well, Sorbian is a tiny language group in East Germany with over 50,000 speakers and similarities to Polish. South Slavic languages. Yay. Please note that this is simplified and I can never do the Balkans any justice in this video and I might make an entire video all about it later. I am very stupid. Slovenian. Slovenian is quite different from the other South Slavic languages, but Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian and Montenegrin are very similar to each other linguistically, and Serbian and Croatian are basically the same language, Serbo-Croatian, with the only differences being the writing system. The Orthodox countries usually adopted Cyrillic-based alphabets, whilst the Catholic countries usually adopted Latin alphabets. Catholic Croatia used Latin, whilst Orthodox Serbia used Cyrillic. Montenegro and Bosnia used both. And with the breakup of Yugoslavia, these countries were now enemies, and you wouldn't usually say that you speak the same language as your enemy, would you? Which is why we're left with this slightly messy situation. In total though, there are just under 20 million speakers of Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian and Montenegrin. Bulgarian and Macedonian are very different from the West Balkan languages though, though they share similarities between them, so close in fact that for the most part, they're mutually intelligible. While Serbians will say their language is completely different from Croatians, or Bulgarians will say Macedonians are just Bulgarians who pretend to be Greek, just take this all with a pinch of sodium chloride. Greek, one of the oldest languages in Europe, with an alphabet from 900 BC. Greek still to this day continues to thrive. It's also considered its own language branch as it's so different from Slavs and Romans. Albanian, a language that shouldn't exist, managed to exist, and no one knows where it came from. Some say the Thracians, or the Dacians, or the Illyrians, but no one really knows, and it's different from every single other language on this planet. It's like alien, god damn it. Celtic, the oldest branch in the Indo-European family. It used to be widespread across Europe, but now it's only in Brittany, France, Ireland, Wales, Oh yeah, here's my better Welsh flag as requested by Maji, Welsh Guards. Why is your flag so hard to draw? Oh yeah, there's also a teeny bit of Celtic in Cornwall, and there's also a tiny bit of Welsh in a weird place in Argentina. But that's a story for another time. Finnish, Estonian, and Hungarian, separated by hundreds of kilometres of pure Gopnik Slavness but are somehow still in the same language group. Uralic languages are non-Indo-European as they originate from the Ural Mountains instead of the middle of nowhere. According to history, these areas were cut off from each other thanks to Slavs and became different languages. Today, they all use a version of the Latin alphabet stolen from another country. And in the case of Estonia, the Finnish national anthem wasn't the only thing they stole from Finland. That's a joke, my Baltic bros. Please don't get mad at me. Around 25 million speakers today. Turkey! Not only being a delicious bird, having some of the world's best ice cream and amazing kebabs, speaks Turkish, which is a Turkic language that originates from frickin' Mongolia, about 7,000 kilometers away, the same distance from London to the northern border of Namibia. Turkish is the main spoken language in Turkey and the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. 
88 million speakers worldwide. Maltanese is basically Italian Arabic. Basque is a prehistoric language that somehow still exists. And there's also about a bajillion other language groups I haven't mentioned. So good luck with that. Have you been a good human and stuck around at the end of this video? Good, well now you're a language master. Which language should you learn then? English. Goodbye. And now just a quick shout out to Canadians World. Good buddy, good mapper, please check him out.